Hi everyone. In today's video I'm going to talk a little bit about how to recover lost data on either a damaged disk, whether it be an external, a thumb drive, or even the internal disk that runs your OS. There are ways to recover data even on damaged disks that don't mount on the desktop. So if you're watching this video because you actually have a damaged disk, I'll give you some tools and techniques that you can use in order to determine first how bad your situation is, and second what you can do to recover that data if you can recover it all. Now the first thing that you have to think about is if you haven't done anything to prep for a situation like this then it can be very rough on trying to recover the data but you still can and there are ways of doing it. I'm going to take the position on this video to kind of go through what you should do. So besides showing you what you need to do I'm also going to show you what you should have in place in case you have an emergency. Now if you're like me we all say we're going to do backups, we're going to set them up, and sometimes you just don't get around to it. And then by the time you have a crash, you really have a hard time trying to get your data back. So I have some videos on how to create boot disks from Yosemite or Fel Capitan or even from Maverick, and I'll put links of it in the uh, comments area. If you've never ever set up a boot disk, it's very important to do so, especially if you're running a laptop with an in internal drive that has nothing else but that. So let's get started. What do you do? Your your hard drive is not mounting on your desktop. All your pictures are on it. All your MP3s are on it. And you think you've lost everything. And you're really freaking out. Well, the first thing to do is take a deep breath. There are things that you can do to recover even a drive that doesn't mount on the desktop. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is determine if the disk is dead and we have to find a way to boot because you can't really tell if the disk is dead unless you get into disk utility and see if the icon shows up the way you get into disk utility if you have a way to boot uh, so you go to go utilities and you open up disk utility when you open it up even if the hard drive is not mounted it may be grayed out here but it shows up there's a good chance that you can recover uh, that hard drive data which is really good if it's not showing up then you probably have a dead disk and the only way to recover it is possibly to send it out to a repair service to actually remove the disk that's inside of it and put it into a new mechanism because the mechanisms may have died however it is a costly thing to do and unless it's really important data I wouldn't advise it but if you have important data on there and you don't know what to do go to a disk recovery uh, service they can do that they can actually remove the cylinder they do it a lot when there's fires or floods or things like that in a house where um, the data from a company you know gets uh, lost so that's one way of doing it so if it does show up here but it's grayed out you can click on it and then just run first aid on it once you run first aid on it um, it will determine whether or not there's something wrong with the drive and you'll have a better idea I usually watch this when I'm running it because it'll come up with like a different color in there, either red or orange, saying that there's something wrong with the drive. At least it will tell you what's wrong with it. It may not recover it, it may not be able to repair it, but sometimes, in a good portion of times, a disk utility can repair a damaged disk and you can be back in motion and it's really something very minor. But if it says at the end of this, and usually it runs through all of this and gets to the bottom, and it says it cannot. Uh, fix the disk well at that point then you know um, you only your only choices are recovery utilities which I'll show you a little bit later in the video so as you can see it goes through it it takes a little bit of time but once it's done it will say at the end uh, this disk appears to be okay and if it says that you're probably fixed and you don't have to do anything more if it doesn't say that if it says that it has bad nodes or whatever you may want to go through a repair process if it still doesn't repair it there are repair utilities that you can use which I'm going to show you later in the video in order to repair the disk but it's always good to start with the disk utility because this is the first thing I always run and if uh, it does find an error and it fixes it you're you're good to go so let's take a look at what to do if you don't have a way to boot the drive because a lot of people uh, come to you and they say my own it's only my internal drive I don't have anything uh, to boot off of to even run disk utility the first thing I would do is run a recovery partition now what is a recovery partition with Yosemite and El Capitan there's a hidden partition that the system itself puts in and if you hold down your command and R key 
on your keyboard while you're starting up your computer, even if it's not mounting a drive, it'll mount the recovery partition and bring you up to a win window that will allow you to select disk utility. And then just do the same things that I told you to do, which is open it up, look for it on the side. If you see it's there, run repairs. If you don't see it's there, then you have a bigger problem. But let's say you do open up the disk utility and you do find it after uh, you do the recovery partition, just try to boot, af boot, boot from it after it says it's okay and it'll be fine. Remember, Command-R uh, will only boot one time. It won't continuously boot into that recovery partition. The next thing you can do is have a thumb drive available. If, let's say, for example, you don't have a recovery partition, it's missing or it's also damaged because it was part of the disk, uh, it's good to have an external thumb drive. If you've never prepared a thumb drive with an OS on it, uh, you can create one uh, with another video I have using Disk Maker X, and it's really very easy. If you have a friend who has a computer or another Mac computer in your house, you can plug in a thumb drive, create the OS on this little thumb drive, and then bring it back to the computer that's having the problem, plug it in, boot off of it, uh, you're holding down uh, the option key so that you can pick uh, which hard drive that you want to boot off of. So the idea is you go over, you make this thumb drive on another computer, you bring the thumb drive back, you plug it into your computer, you restart it, you hold down the option key, and then you select the thumb drive, and then you go through the same process that I told you for disk utility. The other option is to have an external drive, just like a thumb drive, but one that already has uh, the OS on it. Some, some people have said to me they don't have any friends who are willing to help them with this and don't have time. Well, you can actually buy them on eBay. I actually went onto eBay and I did a search for Mac OS Yosemite 10.10 .10, uh, bootable USB and people were selling it for 16 bucks. I'm sure they're fine because if you don't have a boot disk for 16 bucks, it's the only way that you're going to recover it and maybe they'll do expedited shipping. Just remember once you get the USB disk, you plug it in, you hold the option key um, and select the thumb drive and then run the disk utility that I told you. So there's a way to get you booted and that's of course step one on how to recover your data. You got to get booted because without knowing whether or not that drive is even showing up, you're not going to have any luck at getting your, um, your drive back. Some things that you can try without booting is uh, booting into single user mode. Sometimes what the problem is with the disk has nothing to do with the actual internal drive. It has something to do with the OS. And if it has an OS issue, then you want to try to boot into these four different ways of booting. One, in single user mode, you hold down the command key and the S key while you're booting up and it'll kind of turn off all of the extras and just give you a very simplistic, uh, what do you call it, uh, operating system so that if there's something that's causing your computer not to start up, this can actually fix it. Zapping the PRAM. This has helped me numerous times. I highly recommend doing it, especially whenever you have a problem. Um, hold the Option Command and PR key. And usually the way you do it with your fingers is you take your middle finger, hold down the Option key, your pointer finger, hold down the Command, and your pinky for the P, and your pointer for the R on your second hand. And hold down all four keys at once after you hit the power button to start up. It'll zap it. I usually tell people, let it zap three times just to make sure you got it. You'll hear it restart. After it restarts three times, release and see if you boot. Sometimes it's as simple as that. There's something else that might be in the random access memory and you just need to get it cleaned out. The other way to do it is also to do it in safe mode. You hold down the shift key on boot and that allows you to boot in a safe area so that you're able to kind of also have less peripherals connected. You might be able to boot. Remember, any of these, if you can get to boot, you might be able to get into disk utility to be able to do the repair. And this is all free. It doesn't cost you any money to do it this way, so it doesn't hurt to try. Also, it's a good thing. A lot of times I've had issues with disks that wouldn't boot because something was plugged in that had an OS that was damaged on it and somebody didn't realize it. Holding down your mouse, the button on your mouse, or pushing down on your trackpad while you're booting will eject anything that might be in your computer. So if you do have a CD drive or DVD drive or um, external drive or something that might be causing the issue, it's always good to do that. After you get all of these open, try to run disk utility. 
if disk utility is showing the drive is there but it still won't mount and you it won't repair it the next step would be to try some recovery utilities um, I recommend if you're going to go in this route if you do see the disk there you're going to be able to recover the data probably a higher percentage of times so you definitely got to have an external drive that you're going to be able to move the data to. So a thumb drive might not be big enough, especially with a 250 gigabyte internal SSD drive. So you're definitely going to need an external. I always use Lissy rugged drives. I just like them because you can throw them around and they have this like rubber side to them and they just plug in without having to put plug them into power. You could just plug them into your computer. So um, I'll, set, I'll put a link in there, but it's the Lissy rugged drives. Uh, they're very good. So let's take a look at some of the recovery utilities that are available and just on a side note you see the operation is successful this was my running first aid on my El Capitan disk that's what you want to see if you see that you're probably your hard drive is okay 